Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to this uh, restoration of an antique uh, Ben Wade pipe. So the first thing we're going to be doing is trying to get this uh, mortise and tenon separated. Uh, as I mentioned in the overview video, this is a screw-in tenon. You can kind of see the, the seam right in there. And, you know, I'd like to just be able to push down on this and turn it, but it's not turning very easily so that's not going to happen i'm worried about bending these uh, silver wings they're relatively delicate so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to um, sort of bind this up and see if that'll give me some additional leverage on the on the mortise now to do that i want to be careful because i do not want to destroy the patina on that uh, at all so what I think I'm going to do is, let me get some scissors. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I, I want to be able to tape this and use, you know, the tape combined with the remaining stem as a way to turn the, uh, the tenon and, and hopefully get it free from the mortise. But I don't want to tape directly onto the silver because I don't want to disrupt that... Uh, that tarnish and patina. So I'm taking just a piece of regular old uh, cling wrap, saran wrap, uh, whatever you may have would work, and I'm just using that to wrap, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to use that, to wrap uh, prim primarily the silver. I just want to get a layer of it on there and hopefully get it stuck on there. Just enough, it, it doesn't have to hold the stem in place, obviously it's not going to hold the stem in place. And I want to try to get the stem back in as best I can in its original position. But I just want that there to uh, protect the silver. So now, what we'll do is, um, you know, actually, I may regret this, but I think I'm going to trim off a bit of this because I do want to be able to adhere tape to the stem. So let's just... There, that's good. All right, and now we're going to take some of this uh, tape. And really any tape would work on this. I'm using this... Uh, hockey tape that uh, George Debos recommended and boy it's been a great addition to my pipe uh, repair toolbox and I'm just gonna use that to hopefully bind the stem and <laughs> what's left of the stem and the tenon together This stuff is a bit stretchy, which is nice. I got it all goobered up here, but that's okay. And that ought to that ought to be good. So now let's see if we can get that to break free. Eh, absolutely not. <laughs> we gave it a good shot, but that's not moving. All right. Maybe a little. Well, actually, the best thing to do at this point is going to be to put this whole thing in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer for about uh, 20 minutes. That'll cause everything to contract and hopefully we'll be able to, to get that unscrewed. So I'm going to go do that and uh, I'll bring you back afterwards to see if it worked. All right, we got it. Um, my apologies for not filming the unscrewing of this, but... Uh, I needed to do it as soon as it came out of the freezer, and it just was not possible. Uh, all went well. This is one of these screw-on, so the tenon actually stayed in here. And I believe that's a bone tenon. I'm not absolutely certain, but it would make sense given the, the date of this. Um, I'm guessing this tenon screws in, but I do not know. For certain so I'm gonna to have to see if I can 
get that unscrewed. Uh, if not, we could just cut it off and drill. That, that would be fine. So the next step is going to be to see if this uh, can be removed easily or if we have to resort to uh, a bit more trickery. Well, that was uh, much less successful than I had hoped. I went ahead and heated it up a bit because it clearly wasn't moving from, uh, from being cold. And I went and you know tried to apply some light pressure with, uh, and yeah, it just shattered, which is fine. We, we were gonna replace it anyway. Um, so <clears throat> what we've gotta do now is remove the rest of that tenon insert. And if it's screwed in, what will happen is we're, we're, we're gonna just take increasing drill bit. So I have here a one eighth and I've roughly measured the um, the size here so I know about where I'm going to be stopping. But ideally if this is threaded uh, this will get to a point where the insert just crumbles and the threads will be revealed and then we can be more precise about things. So this is just going to be a matter of very slowly increasing the diameter of the draft hole through that insert and I'm not sure how far in we're gonna go um, that kind of sunk in at that point so uh, it was like right about there seems to be the the depth Let me move my little okay so that insert is yeah, just about a half inch so that that, that makes sense about a half inch so we're just going to keep doing that. We'll we'll move in uh, with with increasingly sized bits until this thing crumbles, and I'll bring you back once we have a uh, a cleared mortise. Okay, so if you noticed in that last uh, little bit there where I was showing a larger drill bit going in, the, um, the silver uh, band has, has come loose. So I removed that just to, to keep it safe. And we've run into a little bit of a problem because the, we're a little off center there. So we're pretty much down to briar on this side. And I can probably show you don't know if I'm going to be able to catch the light right on this, but there are threads in there. Why does this never work out right? I'm hoping that you can see that there are some threads in there. So we're down to briar here and threads, which is where we want to be. And then the hope is we'll just ream away those threads and be ready to put a Delrin tenon in. But on this side, we still have a fair amount of bone and it's glued in uh, very well. So. That's a bit of a problem, and I, I don't want to just go in there with drill bits and, and, and try to crack it out for two reasons. One is when the, this is going to be hard to show you, let me zoom in more, that's the wrong way, and put a little bit more light on. So when the band came off, it's apparent that there is actually a small crack in the, in the shank right along here. So that's fine, I can fix that, the band will protect it, it's not going to be a problem, but I don't want to make it any worse. And the other reason is I, I don't want to be cutting away briar and leaving bone, because I'm, I want to have a nice concentric mortise when I'm done. So unfortunately that means the next step is going to be a very long and labor-intensive filing process where we're just going to go in here and file away until all of that bone is gone. And while I know there's a few of you that would like to watch this, it bores me. So <laughs> I'm not going to show you this. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do this off camera and I'll bring you back once we got the, the rest of the bone out. Well, it took some doing and made quite a mess, but hopefully you can see now that that is a nice uniform 
mortise, the threads are intact, and the remains of the bone insert are here. Uh, my tools of choice were just a uh, triangular file that let me kind of cut some grooves in it, and the the round file let me take down some of the edges, and then this uh, dental pick just let me get in there and kind of crack it out as I got close. Uh, so, so this is great. We're all set. Uh, the threads are there. We want to ream those out, and that'll be the next step. But I think at this point, I'm going to clean up a bit of this mess, and uh, we'll we'll continue this in the next. Uh, next section in this series. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch us. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so you can get notifications when new uh, episodes post either in this series or in future restoration series. Hit the thumbs up button, it really helps us out. And until next time, talk soon.